Formation Commission to order. And Rachel, if you would please uh, proceed with the roll call. Okay, I will begin with Chair Blanchfield. Here. Commissioner Connolly. Here. Commissioner McEntee. Here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Commissioner Rodoni. Here. Commissioner Murray. Here. And alternate commissioners Skelton. Here. And Commissioner Brown. Here. And please let the record reflect that Commissioner Arnold Condon and Commissioner Kais is not present. Thank you very much, but we do have a quorum and can conduct business. Um, first item, anybody have any changes they want to make to the agenda? If not, we will proceed ahead. Let me know if I'm, my voice isn't strong enough. I'm getting used to this particular microphone. Other ones. Um, open time. This is the time that we set aside on our agenda for members of the public to address the commission on matters that we're not going to discuss this evening. So if you have something that you'd like to discuss with the commission that's in the commission's purview, that was the opportunity. Seeing none, uh, I will move to the consent uh, calendar items. We have six on these, including minutes of our last two meetings, a regular meeting in uh, August and a special meeting we held in September. Um, ratification of reconciled payments uh, from the first of the fiscal year to the end of August. Budget update, progress report on our work plan, current and pending proposals, which are information on proposals that may be coming to us in the near future, and a request for changes and condition of approval uh, we made to a parcel of 263 2nd Street in the vibrant town of Tamales. I have a, a couple of items uh, I would like to discuss, so therefore I'm pulling the uh, meeting minutes, and uh, welcome Commissioner Condon. I apologize. Does anyone else have anything, any other commissioner have any matter, uh, Commissioner McEntee? Uh, yeah, I'd like to pull uh, item three in the budget. Three in the budget? Okay, any other ones? Okay, uh, let me just go to mine, and, and because I think this is more of a housekeeping matter that deals with the budget. I mean, excuse me, with the uh, with the minutes, uh, and these are the minutes for the uh, special meeting we held on September seventh. First off, uh, the rule: all minutes present was Chris Skelton, you know, Chris Bird. It's an easy oh. mistake to make. <laughs> so it's since uh, Commissioner, former Commissioner Burke was had just left the commission. Uh, the other matter deals with the open time. There's a sort of a, a excuse me, I press that again. Uh, moving the discussion that's in adjourned to closed session up into open time. That's actually where it's intended to, to go in there. And in during the closed session, I wanted to make sure that the minutes reflected that I invited any member of the public to address the commission on the subject of the closed session before the commission actually went into closed session. And there were no comments from the public, so we went ahead. And lastly, uh, when we returned to open session, in addition to those matters that uh, are in your minutes, uh, the commission members asked Vice Chair Condon and myself to s select a person with LAFCO experience to be available to assist the fall AC analyst when needed. Uh, so we are working diligently on, on that. So those are my comments on the, on the minutes. Uh, the corrections, I think, are more of a housekeeping matter that uh, should be made. Uh, Commissioner McEntee? Uh, should, we, should we close that one off and then do the... I think this one's closed off. I, I would put it back, and is there questions on it? Commissioner Murray? Did, uh, Jeff, so I think there's also some discussion about the immediate receptionist uh, function for 
for the office as well since you brought those Yes, up. that was one of the things that we delegated to uh, to Rachel. I, what I thought I would do is is bring that up when we make our report. Carl and I make our report at the end of the meeting. Uh, but that clearly was one of the matters. Thank you for reminding me. So if there are, are no other questions on on my uh, changes to the minutes, we'll put that back in the in with the uh, other consent calendar items and move to uh, Commissioner McEntee's issue with the budget. Uh, I don't have an issue with the budget. I just have um, I, any significant changes in the budget I, I think should be on consent. So I would just would like to hear this down before and have us discuss it. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, I just said I would like to hear the staff report. I would like you to present the present okay. staff report rather than just have it go on consent. So absolutely. So would I I can can we pull that and add that to after the North Marin update? Or however let me make sure that I understand and Commissioner McEntee, what you'd like to do is pull this out as a separate item and have it discussed. And we could do it here now, or or we could, we could, I guess we could, we could uh, adjust the order on the agenda if we get called and read it out. And we could, either way. Could you do it now? Yes, Rachel? absolutely. <coughs> Why don't we just do it now so we can, if it's fine with all the matters. I, I, don't have any, I don't have any major items. I just think it's a good thing okay. that we discuss as there are some change, changes okay. on this. So let's suppose that you're satisfied with the explanation, but then we'll move it back into the consent calendar and vote on all of that one time. Okay. Okay? So, okay. Okay. So the budget and actual transactions for 2017, 2018 through September 30th um, and its projection is on pace to finish with the net difference of at least $13,685. And this is a 2.5% um, savings or difference. Um, there will be anticipated savings in payroll costs given that the position of the executive officer um, is you know, no longer with us at this time. Um, we're on the final budget, we believe, will total $556,781. Um, annual revenues are at $546,781. And um, the estimated unaudited fund balance as of July 1st, 2017 was, this is a projection, but it's $191,436,000. So the expenses, at least through September 30th, uh, these are 127 and 126, 127,126 dollars, and we're at 23% of the budget budgeted totals, and this is only with on pace, but with 25% of the fiscal year complete. Um, we have some outstanding revenue of only 400 dollars. Uh, we'll you know write that off uh, at the end of the fiscal year. And our projection totals um, in expenses will be $533,096 um, with a savings total of around $24,000 or 4%. Um, now, uh, the pay increase uh, to the uh, policy, policy analyst position is not directly represented in the report. Um, or specified given that it needs to be approved in, uh, you know, by the membership in an accompanying staff report. Um, but it is accounted for and it can be shown in the reduction in, through salaries, pensions, and benefits account, which um, amounts to around 80% of the total. So one small, is there a small, small thing on the, um, you, you always include the Bay Area and Alaska budget comparisons and that um, our 2016-17 number did, didn't populate, so I don't know if you have that on. I don't have that um, yeah, at the moment, but I will. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. Yeah, no, just a quick question. Notice there's a, a proposed uptick in consultant costs, if you could elaborate on that specifically. So with the absence now of the executive officer, um, it has been uh, suggested or recommended to me or to staff that we should um, at least retain around 
uh, I would say $35,000 in consulting um, to have someone uh, per perhaps give a little bit of their policy expertise to staff in um, applications or proposals. And this will still give us savings and we're still on track to save around 20 grand at the end of the fiscal year. If I, Did you say 30, 35,000? Correct. Is that under administrative costs? 30, 35,000, 40,000, and that's under professional services. Uh, professional services is a total of 26,000. So that's, that's what I believe, and let me double check, but that's what we're at right now. And with, with the save, it should be projected um, at the end of school year 27, 2018. If the commission. So if you see, it's 26,000 that's adopted. And if you go to the end, you'll see it's 70,680. And that's what's projected. On the second report or the first one? It's attachment one, and that should be under page 27. So it. Separately, so I'm, I'm, I don't have page I'm sorry, could you tell me what page that's on? Okay, so let me double check. And sorry, there's no page number on that. Uh, individual attachments, but it should be under attachment one. In the in the, the large expense ledger, is that in the even in the individual um, staff report? I see, okay, in the in the in the yeah, the, the big that one. I was looking at the detail, and the detail just has the adopted one. Correct. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions on the uh, budget update and the year end projections? If not, um, we'll move that back into the consent calendar, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Move to approve consent. Commissioner Murray. Second. And second, Commissioner Downey. Uh, all those in favor uh, the passing the consent calendar signify by saying aye. 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 Any Commissioner Poe? Any Commissioner abstaining? Motion passes, and we shall move to the first public hearing item that deals with the North Marin Water District, the final report on the uh, sphere of influence update, and, and other matters that relate to this subject. If you will recall, at our last meeting, we had a, a, a discussion of this matter. Commissioner Baker requested that we hold it over to give him time to uh, look into some matters. And so it is back with us now. And uh, Rachel, do you have anything to add to the report that you gave last time? So at the Commission's June meeting, a draft report on the sphere of influence update for the North Marin Water District was presented to initiate a 45-day public review period. Um, and this was continued at the last regular meeting for further discussions with the general manager, Drew McIntyre, um, who we have in the audience. And this was on the proposed recommendations. Now, every five years, LAFCOs must update um, each local agency's sphere of influence and now we're focusing on the North Marin Water District, which is known for providing water to the city of Novato, as well as the outlying unincorporated areas. And they also um, provide a, a small wastewater system to the community of Dillon Beach. Now, what you'll see in the final report is pretty identical to the draft. And just like the draft report, uh, the final focuses on areas A1 that are identified as A1, A, B, and B, or excuse me, B1 and B2. Under current LAFCO law and sphere designation relative to the County of Marin, um, one immediate change makes sense of A1, and this should be included into the sphere. It's uh, 
around 2,300 acres of land in uh, West Marin that consists of at least 11 parcels. And they already see, they already receive water service um, through North, by North Marin Water District, excuse me, um, through an outside service agreement. Um, a sphere delineates that the current future and appropriate service area and given that you know this area is already receiving a contract um, with the district uh, staff finds that it's best to formally establish a relationship by expanding the sphere um, other areas of merit uh, other areas that merit inclusion um, but at the moment further analysis is probably needed um, and staff is recommending to hit pause for now um, but would like to you know has made clear in the resolution that in five years when coming back to this topic uh, the commission will look into more and in greater detail and expanding the sphere and expanding the sphere to include these areas now that is rec that's the recommendation in the final report and it's in ca uh, captured in the company resolution and with that I'm happy to answer any questions answer any questions or clarifications. And um, also we have the uh, district manager, Drew McIntyre to speak. Okay, um, first of all, I'd, I'd like uh, to give the opportunity for Mr. McIntyre to say anything he wishes uh, regarding this matter. Rachel, do you know how the sound that works? Hello, hello? Clearly not that one. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't sound like, although I have a pretty strong voice. I, I think that's going to have to do. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, fellow commissioners and staff. Um, I'm essentially here tonight just to uh, say a couple things. Number one, I wanted to thank staff for incorporating the substantive changes and from our comment letter, and that North Marin does not have any additional issues with respect to uh, the recommendation of the sphere of influence for this uh, category A1 and expanding uh, the sphere for North Marin and um, our West Marin service area. It's duly noted uh, the placeholders that are identified as, as category B, that those will come up for additional discussions in five years. And, and again, uh, we're fine with that. So essentially, uh, just coming down to make sure if there are any other questions uh, that the commission have, has, I'd be happy to answer. And then finally, I'd like to just notice when I drove in in the parking lot that these meetings are timed perfectly with the smart train, so I have to remember that <laughs> next time I come. So I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Otherwise, I'll exit the podium. Thank you very much, Commissioner Murray. So, Drew, just in general sense, so 86 uh, square miles is what the district sphere is. Is that is there a kind of a threshold in terms of uh, additional areas to be added, or, or what's your sense on that uh, for future fear changes uh, and, and any additional acreage? Uh, good question. Actually, we have, and it was brought up at our earlier meeting this summer, we're actually looking at uh, reducing our overall service territory um, in a couple of locations, primarily out in West Marin, north of Point Reyes Station in the Marshall area. So really, in terms of overall service territory down the road, I would expect that uh, it, would, it would be reduced, not increased. Okay, and just a follow-up to that. Uh, we had some folks here looking at the urban growth boundary, and has there been any work uh, with those representatives from the city in terms of urban growth boundary and making sure that those are kind of in sync with uh, the sphere of that kind of north water district? So north Marin water district's um, service territory in Novato is uh, greater than the city of Novato's sphere of influence. So we in, in we're, we're closely aligned with Novato Fire Protection District. And so we include um, the outlying county areas. And uh, that's been that way for many years. Uh, the urban growth boundary, as everybody's aware, has been in place for 20 years. That boundary is not changing. So I don't anticipate really any, any significant changes moving forward. Thank you. Okay, any uh, more commissioner questions uh, before I open the public hearing? 
I just want to make sure that you had an opportunity to comment on our document that this district is the subject of. Um, okay, I'm going to open. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, it very much. Um, we're going to open the public hearing. Any members of the audience would like to just comment on the uh, on the report and its recommendations? Now's the time to do it. Chris? Good evening, commissioners. Uh, yeah, I had a question about uh, the area described as A1 and specifically why, <clears throat> if this is a, a sphere update, there are two, what appears to be two parcels that are carved out, creating one that seems to uh, exist on an island, and then another that's um, just a, a unique shape. It's, a, it's an odd carve out. I understand that A1 is predominantly uh, created because it's already receiving services, but if we're doing a, a cleanup and we're, we're updating the sphere, I guess why not do it correctly, uh, as I would see it, or, or more cleanly um, in mind with, uh, with the task at hand. So I don't know if there's a rational basis for excluding those two. Um, it feels logical to fill in the gap and actually bridge the sphere between that southern Marshall portion and the, the northern Point Reyes Station portion. And thank you, Commissioner Chris, but um, it, it was on point to what you stated before that we um, just decided to uh, include that area and those parcels that were already receiving service. By North Merton Water District. So this would not expand the sphere of influence in the properties covered beyond that which is now serviced. Correct. In the, in the A1 area. Correct. And to do that would open up service to other that, lands yeah. that are not yeah. designated. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, I was particularly taken by a letter and comments at our last meeting by Mr. Johnson about assuring that new water delivery would not provide for urban growth, but would be channeled to just agricultural uses. And it's my assumption that that is what is happening right now. And it also, I understand that it is in this area, it's the county, not LAFCO, that designates land uses. And so it seems to me that what we are doing are, is being compatible with the principal authority that has land use designation and control. And so we're copacetic, so to speak. Um, and uh, that way I'm, I'm a, I rest more assured than I was at the beginning. I could add to yes, that, uh, Mr. all the properties um, in this extension, I believe, are in all except for one, the mm -hmm. Vineyard property. Uh, Bianchi just was added in, Martinelli was just added in, and Bob Giacomini had been in all already. So I think that risk is very minimal. Great. Good to hear. Thank you, Mr. Uh, any other questions, members of the uh, audience, or comments that they have? Or I make a motion to close the public hearing. Must be one of those cowbells from West Marin. <laughs> um, okay, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Zoni, second by Commissioner Condon. Close the public hearing. So we're being asked to approve the resolution. Yeah. To file and adopt the report and approve the resolution uh, with the recommendations in the accompanying report. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on adopting the resolution and assorted attachments. In the resolution, the comprehensive sphere of influence update North Marin Water District with uh, I'm a state right okay. here. Motion, Commissioner Murray. Second. Second by Commissioner Baker. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? 
Thank you very much. Um, we'll now turn to the next public hearing item, item number eight, which is a boundary change proposal in the reorganization of 276 Mesa Road to the Bolinas Community Public Utility District. Rachel, do you have a presentation for us? Thank you, Chair. The proposal has been brought to the commission to this evening and has been filed by the applicant, Brad Drury, um, as a change of organization of the unincorporated territory in Bolinas to the Bolinas Community Public Utilities District. Um, the proposal seeks to concurrently uh, annex and amend the sphere of the district. Essentially, the proposal, um, the purpose of the proposal is to provide public water service uh, to the affected territory um, in order for the development of a single family residence. Now, the affected territory totals around 20.6 acres and lies just outside of the jurisdictional boundary of Bolinas Community Public Utility District, as well as the Sphere. Um, the existing water main is located on Mesa Road, and this is adjacent to the property in question. The applicant also purchased a water meter through a private transaction, and this would transfer, um, and would transfer that to the affected territory if the application is approved. Uh, the affected territory um, is designated by the county for coastal agricultural uses and further zoned as agricultural residential planned and allows for the subdivision of two legal lots. Um, the development and related intensity improvements are also permissible uh, by the county but re would require a permit as well as um, coastal commission approval. Uh, one modification to highlight is the sphere amendment to the Bolinas Community Public Utility District. Um, and this is to collectively include uh, affected territory as proposed um, and for the continued orderly development of this area and um, also would align with the current and planned uses. Uh, lastly, staff also identified a half acre um, public right of way on Mesa Road um, to be included in the annexation that would otherwise create a small island if not included. Um, and as with that said, staff recommends the commission uh, first adopt the resolution uh, that conditionally approves the conforming sphere of, sphere of influence amendment and then uh, uh, approve the annexation um, requesting 276 Mesa Road um, to the Bolinas Community Public Utility District with the standard terms outlined in the resolution um, and also to include the public right-of-way on Mesa Road. And I'm happy to answer any questions or you know, hear comments. Okay, thank you very much. Do any commissioners have questions of clarification they wish to address to Rachel? Uh, Craig? So just uh, can you explain the level of local review? So adjacent neighbors, uh, their public service districts, their, their review of this, uh, you mentioned not creating this island which, um, with this dedication of public water in that process. So for all of our past proposals, um, it's good LAFCO practice to, uh, if we're approving an annexation, um, to not leave out the public right away um, that it could create an island. Um, I, uh, so if we include this, this will allow the utility district um, to also not to have uh, get permits to say work on the sewer main along that road. Um, also, the other uh, districts within the area, I know Bolinas Fire Protection um, and County Service Area Number 28, uh, there has so there has not been any opposition to this request. And excuse me for not mentioning, but uh, the applicant, Brad Jury, is also in the audience. And if he wishes to say a few words, um, he's here. Okay, I'll, I'll let him do that after the commissioners are finished with their questions of you. Commissioners, okay. Uh, would the applicant like to say anything? You're not required to, but. Um, I'm happy to just add a little. Add a little color to it. Oh. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, commissioners, and thank you, staff. Um, 
they did an excellent job kind of spelling out our, our, our proposal. Um, I'd just like to add, we've owned, my, this is my wife Kelly and I, we've owned the parcel for uh, approximately 17 years. Uh, over that period, we've drilled 18 wells on the property. Uh, so that's, um, unfortunately, we're unable to find suitable water. And so the opportunity came up to buy this meter this year. Uh, staff at the community district and the commissioners of the district were supportive. Um, and we went and sat with them in June at one of their meetings. Um, so we um, purchased the meter and um, made this proposal. Um, because it's really our last opportunity to build our family home out there. Um, drilling more wells. It's, it, the geography is very difficult out there. Okay, anything, any questions commissioners may have? Yeah. Not, not a question, but I congratulate you. Getting a water meter of Bolinas is uh, <laughs> it's quite a feat. It's true. Um, it's true. It's it, it, you know, it, it, it's sad in a way, uh, the home, you know, this year there were several homes that were lost uh, off the, uh, due to erosion. So that's uh, several meters are, are coming. That's going to continue. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Rachel, my understanding is that the construction of a home out there would be consistent with the county's zoning and the county's general plan designation and, and local coastal plan. Exactly. And it has a right that is the, the water meter, right to the water. Okay, thank you. Um, if there are no further questions from uh, the commission, I was just gonna move staff's recommendation. Uh, we have a motion, I've been preempted by, uh, there we go, another I'm sorry, preemption. clarification, is that including, that's including the uh, adjacent right one? Yes. Okay. Right, and, and notification uh, that a coastal permit would be needed for the construction of the ball. Okay, um, all, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? Motion passes. Congratulations. Carry on with your work. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to move now to the, uh, our one remaining business item, and this is recommendations on a temporary appointment of the interim executive officer while the commission conducts its search for a permanent executive officer. As you know, in our last uh, meeting, our special meeting, uh, you instructed Vice Chair Condon and myself to meet with Rachel Jones to discuss uh, with her uh, the temporary position of interim executive officer to carry us through at least this calendar year, which is rapidly coming to a close, uh, and that uh, she would take on uh, the first seven priority work items that we've adopted, we adopted last year as part of our work program, in addition to proposals that come to us, such as the one we've just heard. Uh, and uh, she has said that she would be willing to do so. Uh, we've also discussed compensation in that she'll be taking on more responsibilities. And uh, we also, met with and discussed this with the former executive officer, Keen Simons. Uh, she right now is in the middle step of uh, what is a comparable analyst two position in the county. Again, we under our policies, our staff employees are uh, comparable to a position, like position in the county. Uh, her, this would increase her, her current compensation from about a high $30 per hour to $48 per hour 
which would amount to about $100,000, which is significantly less than the executive officer had, but it seems commensurate with the work she would be doing and what is uh, also done in other lab goes around the Bay Area. So that was the recommendation of policy committee that met and then with uh, Commissioner Condon and myself when we, uh, when we met with Rachel. So we are, that's our report. In the meantime, we will be getting together the policy committee uh, and to see if we can get a search firm, begin doing our work. I was just thinking, you know, why is this so difficult compared to last time? The last time, Peter Banning worked until we had somebody on board and had been working for a couple of weeks. So this has made it look much different than the last time, much more difficult. Uh, and then I have been ill um, for <laughs> the entire time <laughs> since our special meeting until today. So um, I haven't been able to get much going. Commissioner Condon has been very helpful. So uh, that's our report to you. Uh, we will be getting the policy committee together to do the search for some firm to help us in getting a list of people that we would want to interview that would be called down and brought for the commission. Um, in the meantime, we are also looking for and have some good ideas of people that could be on tap that have expertise in land use planning and LAFCO matters. Should Rachel need some assistance on a proposal that comes in that is quite meaty. Uh, so we think now that we're, we're pushing ahead, it's going to take some time, but um, we will be looking for that replacement. Meanwhile, uh, again, as we recall from last meeting, that Rachel would serve as interim uh, until that time. So if uh, what I'd like to do is have a, uh, a motion of approval of that process. Can I, I would love to Yes, you may, I'm first. sorry. Thank you. Um, first of all, I wanted to report back that um, Sashi and I went to the League of California Cities annual conference, and it was kind of almost like a Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy thing, because Sashi would go to a table and discuss um, with some of the recruiters their policies and what have you, and uh, share with them our situation. And then I would go to the table and I said, somebody already came from your lab co. Oh, but I, I, heard, I was telling them each time, you know, I'm gonna pass this on to, I told them that I was passing yeah. it on to you, so I think they just didn't connect the dots somehow. Right, but it, it was really comical. So we really, did do our due diligence um, at the conference. And I wanted to ask who is right now on the policy committee? I, I don't remember. Jack okay, Baker, so it's Jack. And myself. Jack, you and? Baker. Okay, I was gonna suggest, and I don't know if that would work, I, I don't mean to throw you under the bus, Sashi. <laughs> but uh, I was wondering if Sashi um, might be able to, um, Take my place, of course. <laughs> um, for, for this particular purpose, because she um, had talked to certain individuals and um, was able to get a lot of good information. And it would be rather than um, having to repeat this whole course of work, that, um, that you could at least utilize what Sashi's already done and, um, and then go on from there. But I think it's it's rather a waste of time to duplicate all the effort that she went to. I think we should make every attempt to, to get that information. Uh, that would be really, really helpful. Uh, understanding also, in, as far as meetings go, our Brown Act problem if we have more than three members on the committee. That's why we've broken it down that way. But I'm sure we can work out something. Okay, good. And I'm, I'm happy to pass it along. I, I did send it. Um, after the convention, I did send a, a list to the email to the Jimmy, but I can resend it and happy to help however, however is appropriate. Okay, we'll be in touch. How about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, and uh, I, 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 um, I do think that we should try to move on that as quickly as, as rapidly as possible. I concur yeah. with that um, very much. So, so towards that end, I would really welcome the motion to send us in that direction. And the motion is for the salary salary adjustment, or for the for the salary adjustment and for this selection. Well, for the for the for all of it, for the salary adjustment for us meeting with. Uh, a person or persons that could be on tap for Rachel to use while we do the search, uh, setting up the search process and reporting back to the commission, taking the information you have developed as part of the uh, of, of setting up that search process, consulting with you on that. Uh, it may be that it would be good to have you as an alternate to that committee so when one of us uh, is not there you could slip in for it. And if it gets really tense, I'll be the one that you can be the only one. So it, it's all in the above. Okay. If, okay. So it, and, I, and that's kind of mushy, I know, but that's the state of my mind, so. Okay. Well, so, so moved. Okay. Mr. Chair. Oh, and just one, one last thing. Is, hey, Lord, 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 Lord. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, just quickly want to say too, um, reinforcing um, Sashi's sentiment on this, that if perhaps we could send out a doodle poll to the um, policy committee so that it just doesn't get lost in the shuffle and all of a sudden Thanksgiving rush is here and then Christmas rush is here. And so we have a policy committee meeting scheduled for next week, Wednesday. Yes. Um, and I will definitely arrange to schedule a meeting uh, sometime in the beginning of November as well. Great, thanks Rachel. So anyway, we're starting off as fast as we could. Again, I apologize for having my back out on me for a, for a week and uh, having some other problems, but we're moving now. So I've got a motion. <laughs> second. A motion and a second uh, to follow the direction we've all been discussing and to report back on a at each meeting, the commission of the status of where we are. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? Motion passes, and I'll move to the executive officer's can, report. Can, can I ask one question about the last agenda item? The sure. one we just approved. I just wanted an update on the temporary hire. Oh, I think, good point. I think it's important not to have. It is. Office. It's one of the things, by the way, if I may break in also, that you asked us to do. And we pass it on to Rachel. I know she's been working on that from the beginning. Rachel? So right now we have a post announcement out and I've received applications and the interview process will be uh, conducted next week. We should have someone new uh, at the start of next month for, to represent the, um, this title will be administrative associate and they will be at the front desk of the LAFCO office. Thank you very much. It's uh, going to be really appreciated, and I'm sure they'll also have a telephone so they can talk to people out there. Great, thank you. Good point, Dennis. I'm glad you brought that up. Now, the executive officer's report. So I just wanted to uh, let the commissioners know that we will be hosting a, a workshop, a LAFCO workshop, uh, early next spring, and also. Um, I'm open for ideas. We usually have to do a mobile workshop. So uh, if you have any, you know, interesting uh, tours or uh, I know like the San Quentin uh, prison tour, that's one item. If you have something a little bit more light, uh, let me know. Um, so that's on uh, our agenda for spring. And I also would like to announce Cal LAFCO's um, annual workshop this year, uh, which will be held in San Diego. And uh, Commissioner Murray and Skelton will be joining me. Uh, we will be doing our own little mobile workshop there of the Carlsbad uh, desalination plant. So that will be fun. There should be some great panel topics uh, from uh, LAFCO's perspective or to uh, you know, LAFCO funding and island annexations. Um, and also, uh, please join me in giving best wishes to uh, Commissioner Skelton, who is up for the Cal LAFCO board election. 
um, as a public member for the coastal region. Great. And Rachel, did you have something to also uh, contribute uh, about the condition of uh, Keen Simon's family? Oh, and yes, uh, so just a small update. Uh, Keen, our former uh, executive officer, uh, I think is I'm sorry, just. Who are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him know you forgot him already. Uh, but he, um, I tried to call him for a short little thing, but he's moving in. Uh, had, he didn't have the time for me. So he's moving in to his home in San Diego. Uh, the, his third son arrived, I believe, around two weeks ago. His name is Alexander. So if Lex. you can Lex. send up your congrats, because I'm sure everything's a little hectic right now, but he seems to be um, uh, you know, transitioning to San Diego well. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I just have a couple of things. One, I have appointed uh, Commissioner Murray to represent the commission uh, down at uh, the conference to, to be the voting delegate uh, on matters that need voting and Commissioner Skelton will be his alternate. Um, that's all I've got to ask. Great. Just a suggestion on next spring when we host, uh, since Marin's pretty unique in terms of Walt and West yeah. Marin, I, I think Prince Charles, when he toured here, you looked at some of the organic farms, uh, the Strauss, mm -hmm. things like this. I, I think that would really be an interest mm -hmm. statewide of all these, of all 58 LAFCOs, uh, well, maybe 57, San Francisco is no longer LAFCO, uh, but all 57 LAFCOs coming here to Marin, if we could host or connect some way on a tour, it sounds like uh, Mr. Condon has some resources on that, but I just want to put that out there now so yeah, I think it's a great idea, and I know Malt has a number of tours that they already got that would be good to plug into. Yeah, one one resource is the Visitors and Convention Bureau here. Um, Christine Bolke does that, and her she said her boss really does a great job on that. Um, the West Marin taking you know or showing pictures or guiding tours um, of the various dairies farming establishments out there and they're a great resource and love to do it thank you i will definitely follow up with you on that um, because not a lot of great feedback i've heard the tours for the san quentin prison they um you know are really well done it's it's good <laughs> but um you know might go down a very good tour yeah. and then we could yeah so it's still it's still in the back burner but just open to ideas and that's a good one thank you Somehow, I, I think West Marin, they'd be a better, leave a better impression in West Marin. Um, I, I have a, uh, I think the request section, um, Rachel and I had a good conversation about the uh, kind of format of, of the reports that we do and that there could be um, a way to tighten them up a little bit and, and make them a little more streamlined yet still kind of contain all the useful information that we want. And Rachel had some great suggestions there and um, I'm hoping that Maybe the next go round, she'll kind of debut or try a new format, and then we can kind of see how we feel about that. So I just wanted to put that out there for as a, as a thought. Okay, uh, I'd like to see some examples. I, from my standpoint, I think the reports are much better than we used to have. Color graphics and a number of things are very helpful, but that's good wherever we can improve. So. Any other comments before I ask for the magic motion to adjourn? At 7.56, I move to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a motion on. Any second? Second. Second, we're adjourned. Thank you.